15 laps from the finish. We're live at Dover Downs International Speedway. Back in a moment. I looked over there and that car looked like a black car. Yeah, with the sun shining yeah. off it, it's easy. But that's why, like I say, we have replays. I'm watching this. I'm not watching the racetrack. So. No. Boom, 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 boom. Well, Christopher goes to the house. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did well. Yeah, he was, he was having a respectable day. I don't know how he and Benson got together, though. Oh, yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> Good grief. Where's he at? He got a section all to himself. That reminds me of the... You ever hear him say, work like a dog? I've yeah. never seen my dog do anything but eat. Hmm. Depends on what kind of dog you got, I guess. Yeah, uh -huh. yours is real active, right? I got a border collie. Yeah. Works he writes hard. letters, runs a copy machine. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Still under caution here at Dover Downs International Speedway in Delaware. We have been under caution uh, extensively today. This is the ninth caution period of the afternoon. Plus, we had a red flag for 16 minutes. Why don't we take you back in this day at the Monster Mile? Lap number two is when things began. Tony Roper, first time to Dover, first time to find the wall. And a host of other guys got caught up in the mess. Lap number 30, Steve Grissom found the wall in turn number four. The Alabama driver was able to drive away to the garage. Despite the flames, he was fine. Then at lap number 100, Ed Barrier, Casey Atwood, they get together off turn number four. But that was a prelude to Shane Hall at lap 145, who brought out what at the time was our fifth caution of the day. Lap 151, Bessie, Bobbles, Kenson, and Ernie Irvin had nowhere to go. Lap 166, when Phil Parsons hit Jeff Fuller, Fuller tags the wall. And that brought about that 16-minute delay to repair the wall. And just moments ago, lap 183, Ted Christopher, 13 car, Johnny Benson, the 33, caution, lap 183 for the ninth time. And that has brought you up to speed as we are a half lap away from going green with Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to finally put these 15 laps that remain in the books. If he does, it'll be his first win of the year. He has just clinched the five bonus points for leading the most laps here today. That's the second time he has led the most laps in a race this year. He did the same back at uh, the California Speedway in Fontana earlier. Well, you yeah, can see just also. how soft the springs and all in the cars are. When they weave them back and forth to travel, there was like three inches on the left side of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Let's see if Ward can figure out how to get up here and get after him on this restart. Now, you can see the difference right there. Yeah. And that, if you watch that gap, that's how much difference is there. Ward is behind him. Once he gets up to speed, and the speed wall gets right in there, too. And the 66 top 09 just desperately wants to grab second. Yeah, they're pretty side by side going down into turn three. Low down looks like he has a better line in the corner. Yeah, Ward's already going to try to work back under him. Todd's got second. Remember, folks, that yellow 36 is not on the lead lap. Tim Fedewa is a lap down. That orange number five, though, Dick Trickle, he is in fourth. Trying to hang with Todd Bodine and Ward Burton. Well, there's a bunch of cars all lined up behind them there. Well, that's going to be a snarling mess. I tell you, guys done a great job today. Elton Sawyer, he's up there in seventh place now, and he's been having a good day. We haven't said a word about him. There's Dave Blaney, the 93, running in 10th. Behind him is Kenny Irwin, running in 11th. In car number 11. Johnny Benson in the 33 is just behind them. He was involved in that little skirmish on the back straightaway, but seems to be okay. Look at this. Look at Dick Dick Trickle. Trickle. He's in the five, trying to grab oh. the spot away from Todd Bodine. A little 
contact there as they started off the corner, but not enough to make him back off. The 41, David Green, will come down low and grab the spot and bring the 37 of Grubb along with him. Boy, Trickle is out there in, in a dangerous situation. Those cars getting under him like that. Coming to the line for 10 laps to go. Poor old Ward, he's pedaling as hard as she'll go, but I don't think he's got enough to catch it. David Green in 32 doing a nice job today. Ralph, David Green's doing a super job. Eli, coming into today, David Green's best finish was the seventh at Darlington. Right now, he's currently running fourth. Yeah, you know, he's still on pole with Charlotte with that car, and he's run awfully well here today, so uh, that's a mighty fine ride for him. People ask me all the time, why do the guys that run at Nashville when they're learning drives take to these speedways so much? And I said, Nashville has characteristics of just about every Everywhere. racetrack now, you run. i tell you the other thing, too. It's a consistent weekly program. It's been there for 50 years. And not only that, the best competition in the country comes there and races all the time. You saw David Green grand third spot away. There you see Mike Dillon in the 59. The 64, Jeffrey Bodine, the 25, Kenny Wallace, that is 13th, 14th, and 15th. And Kenny's going to grab a couple of spots in that 25 car. Boy, I tell you, a lot of guys are taking liberties with each other right now. Woo, there's some pushing and shoving going on. <laughs> well, down to your final seven miles. Yeah, the dress rehearsal's over. This yep. is for real now. The lead is one and two tenths. Dale Earnhardt's pulled away from Ward Burton. That's why we're showing you all these other battles right now. Because Dale's got clear racetrack and a second and a half advantage. If you look back at Jeffrey Bodine, here comes Jason Keller underneath the Sawyer car as they go through the middle of the corner. Dave Blaney in the 93. That's for eighth place. As it'll be five laps to go the next time they get back to the stripe. Elton drives a Ford. It's one, one of the only two or three Fords that run in this, in this Bush Series every week. And there's only been one Ford victory ever in a Bush Series race here at Dover when Mark Martin won many years ago. Looking at Earnhardt uh, going through the corner here just behind him, I believe that Jeff Burton or Ward Burton is closing in he's just kidding. a little bit. But it's nine tenths of a second. He's catching, but he just don't have... If he could have just done something about those restarts, I believe he could race them real hard. But she's sputtering on him on the restart, and it was just it took away... He deal that big advantage, and he couldn't make it up. And there's that battle for 8th, 9th, and 10th. Oh, Black Lady! Wow. Elton Sawyer and Jason Keller. Wow. Boy, he lifted... I had to think Blaney's a sprint car driver, because he lifted him up off the ground. He was spinning the rear tires. That's called the old chrome horn there. He gave him a little reminder. I imagine when he passed him, they might have rubbed just a little bit. There goes Kevin Grubb now for sixth. He's in the 37, trying to beat Jeff Green of the punch in the 32. When you see those cars, any of these cars come off of either two or four side by side, you've got to hold your breath. So all it takes is a little wiggle, as we saw earlier. And the guy on the outside bumps the wall, and he slams into the guy on the inside. So Grubb grabs the spot. Green and Blaney settle back in. Up front, it's still nine-tenths of a second. Dale Earnhardt, Jr. Back to Ward Burton. There you see the separation between the two. Ward is closing down a little bit every lap, but he's just going to run out of time. Reminds me of watching one of the carts where the donkey's trying to get the carrot, but he can't reach far enough. Yeah. Right now, I'm not calling Ward Burton a donkey by any means, but I tell you, it's just right out there, but he can't get it. You've got to give him a... You know, Ward's done a great job with that car, though. With the problems they've had, and he's still running second. And I'll tell you, he's done a great job. White flag, Dale Earnhardt, Jr. Hasn't won a NASCAR Bush Series since last October at the Gateway International Raceway outside of St. Louis some 18 races ago. But he's going to win here today. First win of the year, eighth of his career. Dale oh, no. Jr. No. wins with a scramble <laughs> behind them wow. with Todd Bodine holding off David Green. Uh -huh. That was what Darrell Waltzup was reacting to. But Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins it. And Ralph, some pressure is off that bunch. Oh, it sure is. And Tony Erie Sr. is here with me. Tony, you get your first win of the year. You retake the points lead. Tell me about those restarts. Those seem to be the key. What were you trying to get them to do? Well, we've been hard on our transmission man here the last few weeks. Uh, we had some transmission problems, and uh, he's working real hard. Uh, 
to uh, do the best job he can. We had a great transmission in there today. Gordy did a good job, and uh, this was for Dad. Again, if you're just joining us, we mentioned earlier today that earlier this week, Ralph Urey, Tony's dad, passed away in emotional time. We're coming back. Victory Lane is next. That was the best you and I have ever worked together, I think. I All enjoyed right. that. I tell you, Todd Bodine poked at 41 yes, sir, he did. I'm <laughs> telling you, that was, and I don't know how that boy saved that car. Best of 99 for the top six. David Green? All the top six, their best finish of the... No. TNN Motorsports live uh, coverage of the MBNA Platinum Second. 200 has been brought to you oh, no, by AC Delco oh, my, Automotive kind of Parts. <laughs> if you're not asking been for it, ever since you're asking for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that Ozone just about got that 41 <laughs> car. <laughs> <laughs> We never got to talk about Baker being at the Kmart last night. No, no, we didn't. no. He just got the mic and just told everybody I was there buying yeah, his huh. underwear. The fans, I, I told him, I said, he's over on aisle five buying him some new underwear. Go over and help him. CNN Motorsports live coverage of the MBNA Platinum 200 has been brought to you by AC Delco Automotive Parts. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Oh man, a lot of smiles again in victory lane. Let's go down there. <laughs> and Dale Earnhardt Jr. helped out of his car by Dale Sr. there. Man, what an immensely popular victory. And uh, you guys have been close several times this year. You finally got one, Dale. Yeah, I'll tell you what, you keep working at it and working at it. This Bush Series is a tough, tough medicine, man. These guys uh, have up, stepped up all the programs. It's hard to outrun them nowadays. And then you got all these cup guys coming up there. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, Ward Burton sure had a good car today. Uh, I don't know if we could have held him off much longer. I was trying to drive my car, got a little tight there at the end. We run real hard on restarts. And AC Duck and Monte Carlo doing good. And uh, we're kind of in mixed emotions here. We, we lost a, a, a relative and a, and a real good friend. And, father of Tony Uri, Ralph Uri, and we want to dedicate this one to him. We wanted to get him one in Charlotte, but it had to come in Dover, but this is for him and the whole Uri family. Well, I know that they appreciate that. We talked to Tony about that just a moment ago, Dale. Uh, you took over the points lead. Also, uh, you you uh, gained a lot of valuable points. Matt Kenseth had a lot of trouble today, so you really had to make some strides today. Yeah, I hate to see old Matt Terrapin's race car, man. He's a cool dude, and, uh, you know, Shirley is a good race car driver, and it's a shame to have to get points that way. I want to do it on the racetrack racing side by side. We sure have a lot of fun doing it, but I figured he'd be up there shortly, but I never saw him, and then I saw his car tore up. That's just a shame for the whole crew. Them guys work hard, and they've really up stepped their program up. That's one of the better teams this year, and uh, we're just glad to finally make it a victory lane run second so many times this year, and here we finally are, man. We're happy. Okay, congratulations again. Have a little fun. Celebrate. He will do that. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets the win. And for the top six drivers there, their best finishes of 1999. And hearkening back to our discussion before we began racing today, Darrell Waltrip, only two Winston Cup drivers in the top ten today. Well, it's a, it's a tough track. And I don't know. Dover is just one of those kind of racetracks, like I said. Some teams excel, some teams don't. you got to have the right setup. Great having you along, DW. We'll see you in Michigan. I'll be there, buddy. And, buddy, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, and all the people that love to race today, South Boston next week. I guarantee you it'll be a good one. It is going to be a good one on the short track next week. Again, a big thank you to Buddy Baker and Darrell Waltrip up here topside. 
While Ralph Shaheen and Glenn Jarrett handled things down in the pits and the garage area, Daler and Hart Jr. reassumes the point lead and picks up his eighth career victory in the NASCAR Bush Series. Tomorrow, Bobby Labonte is on the mud pole for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series race, the MBNA Platinum 400. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. But for now, we're out of here. I'm Eli Gold. Thanks so much for joining us, and our congratulations to the Earnhardt clan back in victory lane here at the Monster Mile. We'll see you tomorrow.